Hi there, and thanks for joining this webinar session on a very important HPB TV topic, the test suite. And this is the latest version of the test suite for the 208, 204 specification, uh, the latest version of the HPB TV core specification. And uh, we've got uh, four great speakers giving you insights on this key topic. Now, why is the test suite so important? It's a key tool for developers uh, to make sure that the applications they're developing are compliant with the latest set of specifications. So they're running smoothly on smart TV sets and on uh, set top boxes. Uh, this is of course key to a compelling Fury experience. And we've got four experts here who know all about the test suite and the latest version, which has just been released. And uh, they're going to give you exclusive insights. And of course, respond to your questions in case you have any um, following the four presentations in the um, Q&A. And so as usual, please submit your questions. And uh, after the presentations, we're happy to respond to them in the last 15 minutes. Um, first of all, the disclaimer as usual, the presentations represent the views of the presented, uh, the presenters and the companies they represent, not necessarily the views of the HPB TV Association. So that's all the formal bits and uh, maybe uh, on the positive side, another thing, um, we've got nearly 180 people who registered to watch this webinar live. Um, don't worry if you have colleagues who have not got the time to watch this live or if time is inconvenient for your time zone, um, the webinar is being recorded and will be made available on YouTube. YouTube on the HBB TV Association's YouTube channel. Also, the presentations will be made available for download on the HBB TV website. And since you registered to watch this webinar, um, you will also receive a link with all the um, download details. Let's go through the agenda and the speakers. Um, first of all, we've got an overview on the Test Suite 204 provided by Rob Foreman from BBC R&D. Hi, Rob. And we've got accessibility, voice control, and DVBI test development, an overview provided by Jason Nash from Ocean Blue Software, also in the UK. Hi, Jason, good to have you. And we continue with DVBI, especially with DVBI test material development. And uh, the presentation is held by Yuha Yuki from Sofia Digital in Finland. Last one in line is uh, behind the test cases, an overview by Van from Samsung. R&D in uh, Poland. Hi, Van. Okay, let's get started. Um, we've got the first presentation and uh, let's have Rob sharing his screen and uh, we'll get started. So enjoy the presentation. Let me unmute myself. Hopefully I found the right screen to... Yes, it's okay. there and All in good. presentation mode. Perfect, thank you, Rob. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Jan. Uh, I'm just going to talk for uh, three or four minutes just to run through kind of the, the broad overview of, of what's in the latest test suite uh, covering HPB TV 204. Uh, so uh, the, the last test suite release that has just come out is the 2024-1. So we have three releases in the year with the um, one and two being the, the major releases and then the, the dash three release at the end of the year will be a uh, bug fix. Uh, so this um, the latest test suite uh, has now gone up to a, a grand total of um, 3,273 test cases which is um, a huge improvement on the on the previous totals and also the approved list uh, which is the, the test cases that are certified as being suitable to be mandatory tests has gone up to now over 2,500. And since the previous year's release, um, we were able to approve 225 tests of which uh, a majority, 134 of them, were new test material that had not previously been approved and that we have been able to get through the approval process for the first time, as well as another 91 that had uh, had a ported and fixed or an improvement made and then the test reapproved after the change, as well as a further 64 that had been fixed and reapproved within the release cycle. Uh, so they uh, are in addition to the uh, the 91 that had been unapproved and then fixed. 
Uh, we also managed to add just over 100 new tests as additional test material, which is the, uh, the informational list that is um, not yet uh, marked as, as ready for approval, but will um, later go through the approval process. And so this release has been a, a real success story in terms of the, the overall size of the test suite, um, over, uh, over 150 uh, new cases added and uh, 191 uh, newly approved tests. So, uh, we also keep uh, a, a track of, of the, um, the progress of the test suite size. So you can see from this since the, uh, the early days, it's been a, a, a huge increase in, in the amount of test material we offer um, to help device manufacturers and, and application authors um, provide a, a good service to the public. Uh, in the last year or so, and the test suite has been fairly stable in its in its size, um, but this current um, release cycle, the the 2024-1, and you can see on the right hand side of the graph, um, it's been a, a a real significant increase in the amount of um, test material and especially approved test material that um, is suitable to be mandatory in, in some markets. Uh, and we've also um, seen quite a, a good improvement in the percentage of the overall test suite that is now approved. So just to run very quickly through some of the, uh, the material that we've added, particularly for the 204 specification, there's 33 test cases um, focusing on accessibility features covering things such as new subtitle capabilities, um, high contrast user interface, magnification, and text-to-speech features. There's 21 test cases added um, covering audio description and AC4 dialogue enhancement. And then um, a, a real the bulk of what's been added is 131 new DVBI test cases, um, about which we will hear uh, more detail shortly, um, covering uh, a wide range of um, DPBI functionality, application lifecycle, um, key handling, broadcast video, stream events. Uh, we also added uh, a number of um, miscellaneous test cases covering some smaller features such as analytics, um, uh, update to the graphics coordinate system in HPB TV, and filling in some small gaps where a, a test um, might just be covering something that had been identified as a gap. Um, as well as the core HPB TV, HPB TV specification, there are 51 test cases covering the ADB2 watermarking feature, which is a supplementary spec um, in addition to the core. And then just looking at what is uh, making its way through the pipeline, uh voice control is just in the the final stages of, of um, getting ready to be added in and um, so that's test cases covering the use of, of voice assistance uh so um again we'll, I think we'll hear more about that it's a, it's a neutral technology neutral way of testing that further supporting materials for dvbi so in addition to the test case there is kind of some of the, the backend functionality that supports DVBI systems. Uh, further improvements to the existing targeted advertising test cases and more tests um, targeted at the ADB2 and operator application supplementary specs. Uh, so that uh, wraps up the, the brief overview of what we're going to be hearing some more about. And I will um, hand you back to Jan. Thank you, excellent. And uh, these insights, of course, will be deepened further by the next presentation. Um, and I'd like to welcome Jason from OBS in the UK to the um, webinar. And here we are. And uh, of course, we're happy to see your presentation on the screen. And there it is, perfectly. And yep, one last thing. 
please don't forget to submit your questions through the chat box or the uh, question tool box and we're happy to respond to them with all our experts at the end of the webinar thank you jason this virtual stage is all yours Thank you. Um, yeah, as you said, I'm going to give an overview of the work Ocean Blue Software, OBS has been doing, um, mainly focusing on the partial implementations. We've been doing quite a lot of the test materials as well. I'll come to that at the end, but I think the main focus is around the partial implementations that HBB TV requested. Um, I think this is the first time they've requested these, and the um, ambition really was to be able to accelerate the acceptance of test cases. I think traditionally the test cases have been developed and then there's a little bit of waiting while implementations are available to actually truly be able to run the test cases, um, see if there's any problems and get them accepted. So the idea by having a, a partial implementation is that we can accelerate that process. Um, and also to some degree, the implementations then also serve as a reference for those doing it in sort of real device implementations. Um, so we provided partial implementations with three main areas. So not all the um, areas that are covered in the 2.0.4 test suite update but the three main areas were in voice control accessibility and dvbi and i'll come on to in a second what exactly what we've done there for those implementations um, they're all based on the open red button project which you may or may not have heard of which is um, something we've created it is essentially an open source hbb tv stack um, and I'll say a couple briefly, a bit more information on that in a minute. And we're using the Android flavor of it. Um, so essentially it's a series of components where we're extending the Android system web view um, and we're making use of a DTV cap, a DVB stack from our partners at DTV kit as well. So we've got essentially a complete Android smart TV that um, we can use for the reference implementation. Um, all the code that we've done for the enhancements to 2.0.4 in these for these partial implementations is available in the old repository so it's completely open source so you can see what's been done there you can take it as a reference um, as well as using it to, to check as I said, run the tests on as well um, there's a few other components in there in library form as well um, just to make things come together um, but it's completely uh, fully available um, and when it comes to sort of verifying the tests using the partial implementations we've done that in in two ways one is to use an extended version of the android emulator um, and then also we've used reference hardware as well um, set top box form factor hardware and um, to run the tests on to make sure it's validated across both systems so if i just go into a little bit of the detail um, i'm not going to spend too long on this but just as i said we've used orb which is the sort of open a uh, source HBB TV solution to base the partial implementations on. Um, this is a combination of essentially some JavaScript libraries and some native C++ components that you can use to extend the capabilities of a standard system browser. So the two currently supported in the project are uh, WebView and Android, and then also um, WebKit for RDK Linux-based applications. Um, it's fully available through the repositories. I'll provide details on those later. Um, and as is all the partial implementations. So this is the basis for the work, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you've got questions on that later, we can always take it offline. When it comes to the partial implementations, one of the areas we um, have done is voice control. Um, here we've essentially extended the um, all HBB TV implementation WebSocket communication framework um, enables HBB applications so then to communicate with the terminal to understand the capabilities of the voice control sending messages backwards and forwards. Um, at the moment, I think HBB TV supports a relatively limited set of voice commands. Um, you can see them listed on the right there, sort of play, pause, fast forward, seek, etc. Um, but you can also use the the process to um, pass in sort of remote control key navigation as well and text field input all via voice. Um, for the reference implementation we've used AWS, um, Amazon's voice recognition service. Um, that can be changed for another system. Um, what I said all the code is available in the repository so you can change that to use one of your choice. Um, one area we haven't actually fully implemented is the text-to-speech side of things. So at the moment for text-to-speech, um, the communication, uh, WebSocket communication is there. So uh, HBBT application may ask for something to be, uh, some text to be converted to speech that will come through the communication API. Um, and then 
you'll simply see that content is then echoed to the console as well. So from the test perspective, or test perspective we can see that the communication is working properly for, for testing the test um, but the actual speech conversion bit hasn't been implemented yet that could be added if it's desirable but it really doesn't um, have any effect on uh, verifying the test that's um, being conducted For accessibility, it's a similar sort of arrangement um, there's eight core features when it comes to accessibility um, subtitles, dialogue enhancement, the magnification UI, high contrast UI, screen reader, you can see them all there on the list really. Um, again, this is based all around a WebSocket communication framework similar to the voice control, so HPV TV applications could communicate with the underlying terminal. Um, and there, there's three main features or requests that an application can make. Um, one to see if a particular feature is supported, um, whether they want a feature to be suppressed or not, or to find out any sort of settings or queries around the feature as well. So again, this the WebSocket communication framework has been fully implemented within Orb and is available in the public repositories for everyone to, to see. Um, in addition, we've created a simple TV interface. So um, when it comes to actually checking or validating the tests, we can see, for example, whether uh, if the test asks for the magnification UI to be set, um, we've got a simple TV interface that enables you to see that request coming through on the console. So we haven't implemented a full uh, magnification UI or full high contrast UI or screen reader, for example, but you can see the communication coming through from the test um, that it's asking settings to be set or um, asking for a feature to be suppressed and you can see that communication is working from the application and you're getting the correct responses responses so we have confidence that the test in the test suite is doing what it should do the other main area was around dvbi um, this one's a little bit more involved it required um, further extensions mainly around the video broadcast object within the hbb tv implementation so as everyone's fully aware i would imagine at the moment and uh, the video broadcast object is fully concerned with broadcast video traditional uh, broadcast um, so we had to make several extensions so it's fully aware of broadband video as well for the dvbi side of things um, so yeah in terms of all the playback states um, on the IP side as also introducing the concept of service instances which is one of the key elements of DVBI um, so you have a sim you can have a single service that's carried in different instances where one instance may be on traditional broadcast the second instance may be actually on broadband um, and then quite a few one of the key features from the test is actually checking the changing from one instance to another and that that's relatively seamless uh, from a user perspective. Um, in addition to those sort of core changes to the video broadcast object, we had to do some changes um, just to the sort of HBB TV implementation. Uh, a second browser instance is required just for the rendering and playback of IP broadband video content as well, being able to switch between that and the broadcast content. So that, again, there's some enhancements to the orb. Um, uh, HPB TV solution required there. Then, as well as if you like the core changes to Orb um, for the DVB High, we also had to implement a simple DVBI client as well. So again, all the the features from the test side, I think, could be exercised, um, and we'd have confidence that the tests are doing what they're supposed to do. So I don't propose to go through every detail of that, but again, we have the DVBI client um, there in the repositories that can be seen. Um, and we've used the combination of the two then to validate all the tests that we've produced for the DVBI. Um, a little shout out to Sophia Digital, I won't say too much because they're up next. Um, they've helped us with the streams for those, for those particular test materials. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a video, but this is a very simple example here, the pictures you see on the screen of one of the DVBI tests where you're changing from um, a 
broadcast service instance to a broadband service instance. So here, it's not very exciting, um, but you've got the traditional channel 801, which is the starting screen for any um, HBB TV test. Um, below it here, it's launching into broadcast video, and then the test makes it transition to a different instance to, to make that clear as actually a different video um, of broadband video below. So not very exciting on the slides, I'm afraid, but um, if you actually take a look at the test suite and the partial implementations, you can run all this for yourself and see um, performing as expected. Oh, sorry. Um, as I've already mentioned, um, we've had close cooperation with a couple of the other uh, partners, on particularly on the test case materials and also with the partial implementations. Um, so big shout out to Sophia Digital are up next. Um, for DVB on the DVBI test assets, helping us there with the streams, and they go into much more detail there um, of what they've done. Um, similarly, we're also responsible for uh, the audio watermarking test materials and the test there. We've had a lot of support from Verence again on the production of the streams that are involved in going with those test materials. So a big thank you to those. Um, one other thing to mention. Uh, we've also created a simple tool for generating the accessibility result declaration. So this is something that's used by the accessibility tests and the tests essentially rely on this, it's an, it's an XML file um, to understand what the expected result of those tests is. So we've created a simple tool um, that can produce that document. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know and we can share that with HBB TV as well. Um, I'll just, in the box here is just a short uh, a short, quite a long list of all the tests that we've been responsible with, so we can see it's quite a few. Um, there are others outside of those of the partial implementations that we've covered, um, some of the mis miscellaneous ones um, and the audio watermarking as well, but that gives you some idea of all the tests that we've done. As I said, the partial implementations, um, they only cover a subset of those, but they've really helped sort of accelerate the acceptance, particularly around the DVBI testing. So I think it's already been mentioned, quite a few of those are already in this version of the test suite release. Uh, they've met all the initial acceptance criteria. So um, hopefully the partial implementations are proving, you know, doing their job. Lastly, I just wanted to mention um, something I touched on at the start. For all the test cases, um, the implementations we've both verified on reference hardware, but also on the Android emulator as well. Um, so with the Android emulator, we have the Orb open source HBB TV solution um, together with some DVB libraries from our partners at DTV Kit, um, meaning you can run essentially a complete Android smart TV on your desktop, just drag and drop in the test transport stream files. Um, and then you can execute the tests in the desktop environment as well. So that is all functioning um, and we can provide access to versions of the emulator. Um, it's a quick way to get up and running with some of the tests just so you can see how they're working before trialing them with a real device. So if there's interest in that, please contact me afterwards or if you go to the um, here, the link, the info at orb.tv, um, you can request access to an emulator we're more than happy to provide that to other HBB TV members. Um, there's a link at the top here. These slides will be shared afterwards. Got the GitHub repositories for the Open Red Button project. Again, this is completely open source. Um, so you can see all the um, code we've done for the partial implementations of the voice, the accessibility, and the DVBI um, all there in the repositories for you to browse, use um, as well. I think I'm done actually. I think that's it. So I'm going to hand back to Jan. Excellent. Thank you very much for these insights and the deep dive into the scope of the test suite and, um, of course, the features it offers and also the um, uh, projects you're running here. Um, let's go on with DVBI. Um, you've already um, mentioned it a couple of times and uh, we've got Juha Yoki from Sofia Digital in Finland with us um, giving you more details on um, DVBI and um, the test suite involvement uh, for test material development. Juha Yoki from Sofia Digital and there is Juha and his presentation. Welcome. 
Hello, uh, thank you, Jorn, and thank you, Jason, for the shout outs. Uh, so, I'm Juha Joki from Sofia Digital, and uh, I'm here to talk about the, uh, the test materials that we prepared for the HPP TV 2.0.4 test suite. Uh, so, what we delivered uh, here in this project, uh, these are the packages 12, 13, and 14. Uh, the ones that were missing from Jason's long list in the middle. Uh, so package uh, 12 uh, is the DVPI service list, package 13 is the DVP dash streams for the DVPI tests, and then package 14 is the DVPI guide data server. So these are the official names from the original RFP for these packages. Uh, we did not submit any uh, individual tests, uh, but all these things that we made are offering support to tests from all these various test areas that I have listed here using the prefixes of the actual test cases. And also included in the, in the uh, delivery is a small scale hosting uh, of the above. So these are available uh, for test development for OBS and obviously for then validating the tests uh, to other parties as well, part of the HPP TV uh, test group and test community. A uh, couple of words about the project team. We had a very small team uh, delivering this. So myself, I was just waving my hands and, and reporting uh, the progress back to the group uh, on the bi-weekly calls. And then uh, Tommy made the service list and content guide scripting uh, based on his experience on, on working with the DVPI reference client, which was delivered uh, back in 2020 uh, for HPP TV as well. And then uh, Aki Nieminen, who is the expert on the dash manifests and stream creation and, and quite a guru on, on those things and getting those to work uh, correctly and quite fast as well. Uh, some general notes about the uh, project. Uh, so. We created uh, for the development uh, a shared repository in our GitLab instance, uh, which was shared with OBS uh, with Daniel Pinero mainly, uh, who was the main developer for the test from the OBS side. So actually we were very, very closely working with OBS, kind of sharing uh, the, the main of bulk of the assets together with them. Uh, then the technology uh, used behind uh, the uh, test materials are quite simple and very well tested. So Python 3 and PHP scripting are used for the service list and content guide generation, which are simple to set up in, in any servers and, and very uh, very simple to, to put in operation by almost anyone with basic IT skills. And one thing that is important to mention here that all the dash manifests in the DVPI world are live. Uh, so uh, perhaps the most complex part of the delivery, even if I say here it was a simple script, uh, but what to live script was written uh, especially for this project uh, to modify uh, the static MPDs provided by us also, but uh, for the live usage uh, for the correct operation on the DVP-I clients on the TVs or, or HPP TV clients. Then, uh, as I mentioned, the test server for hosting was set up uh, for the materials. Uh, this enabled uh, fast validation and acceptance, uh, as was already mentioned also by Jason. And this server is to be uh, is available for the foreseeable future as well. Uh, so a couple of things: uh, how we or how Aki made uh, the dash uh, implementation. Uh, it was oh, sorry. So the video and audio tracks are encoded with the FFmpeg tool. Uh, then the PNC images uh, for the QR codes are pre-generated by a Java tool uh, to each uh, of the target resolution in the in the manifest. And then the PNC overlay filter is uh, invoked only after the video resolution scaling uh, to maintain the best possible QR code quality. So we had some uh, bottlenecks uh, in earlier in the project that this needed some optimization for the QR codes to work correctly. And then the dash segments are generated with the MP4 box tool. Uh, these tools are all open source and uh, we are quite familiar with those uh, from the dash DRM reference application as well. 
then a Python script uh, is combining all these tools mentioned on the previous slide together uh, to generate uh, the correct uh, uh, manifests for each test all according to the specific requirements of the test. And these parameters uh, include uh, the video, uh, number of video track resolutions, uh, number of audio tracks uh, with languages and, and roles. Uh, then the test uh, may require a number of events uh, triggered at, at certain intervals and, and also uh, some other things happening uh, in the stream. And uh, it may use, uh, uh, it may also be a, a multi-period stream and, and each period uh, can be different, uh, can be of a different set of video and audio tracks. So this uh, script uh, that we created is, is catering to all of the individual needs of each test. Then the service list, uh, it is a Python T script, uh, which, uh, Python 3 script, script, which creates the service list according uh, to a config XML file, uh, which is part of each individual test. And, and this, uh, this config XML and the script is then creating the complete DVPI service list, uh, which is currently available on the URL uh, listed below. And the config XML includes all the necessary service definitions and uh, uh, for the tests, and they are all complete DVPI service elements uh, with all the required uh, service instances. And the parameterization is offered uh, for the certain base uh, server URLs for Dash and AIT uh, locations uh, or the Dash segment locations and AIT locations, so it is easily deployable to all different environments. And you can take a look at the current list, uh, which is uh, usable on this address. And then the guide, content guide implementation that is created by PHP scripts. So they are in two parts. Uh, the first part is the program PHP, which uh, generates the program info endpoint according to the parameters uh, when invoking uh, the script and uh, all the parameters are following the DVPI specification. So it is, if people are uh, familiar with DVPI, they can quite easily take this tool also into use. And there is an XML template uh, in TV Anytime format, uh, which is being used and then modified uh, to the correct uh, program start and end times. And there is an example uh, invocation of the script that will create this program info endpoint. And the schedule at PHP is then the second part of the guide implementation. It creates uh, the current, current program data for the scheduler endpoint. Uh, there is uh, now a next requests and scheduler requests uh, that are again following uh, the, the DVPI format. And there are absolutely no dependencies to any external database instances or EPG data systems. So again, these are easily transferable and deployable to any environment that supports uh, PHP. Then a couple of things that are, might be of interest. So uh, the, the manifest creation script uh, offers uh, the base level uh, manifest creation and then uh, test specific creation for the live manifests. And we have a quite nice uh, test player available for this test material. So you can uh, take a look uh, how the how the test material uh, dash streams uh, look like and what is the uh, what is the content of the test, uh, test streams and you can also toggle the video and audio tracks and, and subtitle tracks on and off using the dash.js player on this web page so I encourage you to take a look at that and, and check uh, how the manifests are done. And then uh, this word to live script, it converts uh, the static MBD manifest to live uh, manifests and supports single and multi-period presentation, as was mentioned. And this is important thing that each playback uh, for the test uh, harness use and test, task use, uh, test case use is normalized to use the availability start time uh, zero. So it is always consistent, uh, even if it's a live uh, dash, it is always consistent uh, in each runtime. Uh, there is no uh, segment file manipulation available, should be mentioned that this cannot be used for a real live test for, for one hour live tests, but it is good for the uh, test run uh, cases, so it will work quite well and correctly for, for short, shorter time periods. 
Uh, the status of uh, our dev developers is that the packages are, are complete uh, as far as we know. Uh, the documentation, the tools are mentioned and the assets are available in the test repository and we are in the maintenance period. But there is a, a little bit difference in this maintenance period since we are not providing any single test but uh, test materials which affect uh, many of the tests. And we have I have been pleased to note that these test materials that we have created here are not restricted to test uh, case use or test harness use or test feed use, but these can be easily recycled to other HPPTV conformance activities as well, for example, live subtitle testing. Okay, thank you. That was my presentation today. Thank you very much for this update and uh, the scope of the activities at Sovia Digital, uh, the involvement with, uh, for the long-term involvement with the test suite you have, and uh, now with DVBI, of course, the new, new kid on the block. And um, before we move on to Van, I'd like to remind you that there's still room for a couple of questions. We've received uh, quite a few already. Um, so if you would like to ask uh, any of our experts anything, um, please do so and uh, submit your questions. And uh, the Q&A will be followed after the next presentation. So I'd like to welcome onto this virtual stage, um, Ben from Samsung R&D. And uh, Ben is also the chair of the HPBTV testing group, uh, one of the working groups inside the HPBTV association and task forces um, to support the development of the standard and the specifications. Ben is going to give us um, a look behind the scenes of the test cases. Um, so this is why we saved this as the last um, presentation, because um, now you've got uh, some knowledge and uh, Ben is going to round that all up for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's there. Okay, thank you. So hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the webinar so far. Uh, so my presentations will show you how we work with the test suite. So we start with the test system and then very quickly about who needs the test suite and who can use it. And in the end, how test suite is created and maintained at HEV TV. Um, here's an outline of an example test system. Uh, to use the test suite, users need the test environment, which consists of two major components, test equipment and a test harness. Uh, regarding the test equipment, we need the device we are testing and we need the DVB playout or dictate to generate DVB signals required for testing. As for the second components, um, you already heard Jason mentioning the test harness. Uh, test harness is necessary in supporting test executions and gathering results. Uh, it is used to do things that uh, the tester can hardly do manually for example, performing the device performance measurement, in which the results are usually in milliseconds. A test harness can also cause changes in the environments during test executions to check specific scenarios. And this kind of operation is also not easy for the tester to perform. Uh, besides, it allows uh, automations of many in test cases and thus reduce consequences of human errors. It's worth mentioning that uh, the test environment implementations is an individual decision. Uh, the components may be physically installed on a single PC or they may be as well virtualized or integrated into commercial tools. Uh, it is up to test suite users to decide. A test suite is a great tool, especially for those who need it and know how to use it. Uh, while talking about test suites, most people think about device conformance certification. However, the test suite is also widely used by HPTV developers to verify the implementation. Who can use the test suite? Anyone can access the test suite through an HPTV registered test center. Uh, a list of these can be found on the HBBTV website. You can also find the information on how to become a registered test center. HBBT members who have the necessary expertise and equipment may license a test suite for use in their facility. And it's worth to know that uh, early access to test materials before future release 
is granted only to host members who contribute to testing activities. Now, how tests are created and maintained. Here at an HBTV life cycle example, a, according to HBTV rules, for every published spike, there is a description of what will be tested by the test in the test suite. And when the spike is published, HBTV commissions tests based on those descriptions uh, from external suppliers like OBS and Sophia Digital. Uh, the test then undergo a verifications and approval process at the testing group. And it usually takes uh, six to 12 months from spike publications to test release. Uh, now going into more details of the test review and approval process in the testing group. Uh, first, tests go under code review after submission. If a test passes reviews, it goes to a verifications on devices. If it passes in at least one device, it will be approved. A test can also be approved without verifications on devices if four months have elapsed since the test was most recently reviewed and no issues since then. If a test passes review but fulfills neither of the above conditions, it will be added to the test suite as additional test materials. Additional test materials can be used by HBBTV developers to verify their implementations but cannot be used for device certifications. If a test is challenged, it will be fixed, resubmitted, and go through the review process again. Here are some more words about the last phase of the approval process at the testing event because it's a very important phase. Uh, the testing group organize testing events before every test is released. And during the events, tests are verified on multiple devices. Uh, some of them have the newest solutions that are not yet publicly available. And this kind of device is usually not accessible in any receiver zoo. Uh, so a testing event, it's an occasion to verify tests on both devices, those that already exist in the market and those that will be in the future. Many issues have been identified and resolved during the event thanks to face-to-face -face discussions between test providers and HBBTV implementers. And developers and testers who just started their adventure with HBBTV can count on support from test and test hardness providers on how to set up a test environment and how to run the test. And I'd like to take uh, this chance and invite you to the next Black Fest and testing event, uh, which takes place at the Kinetan office in Milan in the last week of June. You can find more information and the link here. The, the summary, the test suite is a very powerful tool for both broadcasters and HBBTV implementers. It helps to ensure that HBTV applications have the same look and feel on all devices. Millions of devices actually are certified with the test suite every year. And thanks to the test suite, manufacturers can accelerate the HPP TV product launch to the market. A lot of work has been done behind these 3,000 test cases. And with the test suite growing, more is in ahead of us. And I'm happy to see the testing group keeps growing. And you are welcome to join us and contribute to the evolutions of the test suite and testing strategy. I look forward to seeing many of you in the upcoming testing group meeting and testing event. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so this adds nicely some background to the presentations we've just had on how the machinery of the test suite is um, working and of course on how you can contribute to um, the further developments. As you can see on the screen, we've got a couple of questions and I'm um, happy to invite the remaining presenters to the screen. So please um, click on the little pop-up window and join us here on the virtual stage. There's Jason, there's Joha, and we're waiting for Rob. And then, excellent, we are complete. And let's take a look at the questions. And some of them are already directed to a certain speaker. The first one goes to Rob from BBC R&D regarding test cases for key are buttons on a remote for specific features of the TV, such as captioning or audio selection included in the tests. Uh, so uh, I think that I might have to refer that question to somebody who knows 
that particular part of the specification a bit more closely, I, I think it might be the case that some of those buttons are not available to applications. Um, well, I've just had a, a very quick look at the, at the list of tests and um, most of the, the newer um, key handling tests mention transport controls. So that's play, play pause, stop, record, um, those buttons. One of the difficulties of, of the test week growing so much is that it's harder for anyone to uh, keep track of them all in your head. Um, yeah. if, you, if you go to the HPBTV website uh, and go to uh, the page that says testing information and resources, um, there's a PDF file there which is available to everybody which lists um, uh, a description of, of every test available. So uh, that's a good place to look. Excellent advice. Anybody else wants to respond to that or we move on to the next question? Right, next one is for Jason. Uh, how do you define the vocal phrase of for the test voice of voice control in various languages? The vocal phrase. So yeah, with the test that we've done, um, we've provided some reference uh, recordings in English. Um, but the tests themselves, they rely on the um, accessibility results declaration XML, um, which is something I mentioned briefly when we were doing the presentation earlier. Um, that's something the manufacturer provides, and it's that XML file that actually provides an indication of which voice file it is the test uses. So it's within the um, Whoever's running the test, you have the re you, you're able to change it for your own recording for a given if you want to change the language to something else. It's not hard coded within the test, for example. So we provided some English based reference files. Um, but then, as I said, the, the specific file that's used together with the sort of the textual translation of what's in the file is actually all done in this XML document. So you can edit that uh, and you can make your own local language specific recordings to use with the test. So it's flexible. It's flexible, in other yep. words. Thank you. Um, next one goes to Rob again. Does the latest test suite support tests for broadband video playback with or without OPAC with broadcast related application at the same time? Uh, so I do know this one. So the o OAPC is um, one of the newer um, operator application features. And those newer features from the, the updated spec are um, still uh, available as, as completed test assertions, uh, but they are still in the process of, of um, being put forward for implementation, so they're not available to run yet. Okay, um, next one is open to anyone. Is there standardized or supposed implementation of Dash, Dash uh, JS for broadband video playback tests? Um, but in my view, OBS's view anyway, at least there isn't a standardized version of Dash.js. I think the tests are agnostic, so it will come down to whatever Dash playback technology is used on the devices that may or may not be Dash.js. Um, in our case, in all of our reference uh, open source stack, we do use Dash.js, and there is a version of that in the repositories because. Um, I think it's fair to say the standard version of Dash.js has some, it's not fully compatible with the HPV TV specification. So we have been making changes to it to make it more compatible. It's not 100% compatible, but more compatible. Um, and uh, yeah, our intention is to actually feed those back to Dash.js as well when we get the time. Um, but in the short term, they are there in the repositories. But the tests themselves, I think, need to be agnostic. So um, they don't dictate any sort of playback technology. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could add. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, very quickly that uh, agree with Jason, and and of course there is uh, the Dash.js reference player that uh, is available on the on the Dash IF website. And uh, what we are doing, we are using uh, mainly the standard Dash.js player for our very easy PC testing. Uh, but then on the HPP TV device, it should work with any Dash player, and also on the PC side. And we too are. A little bit uh, involved in the Dash.js development that we are at least submitting uh, some bugs and, and stuff back to the to the Dash 
project and the dash validate validator should be mentioned also that uh, the dash validator tool should be used to validate any mpds or live live mpds that you are developing for the or any test case or or even commercial uh, streaming solution mm -hmm. thanks for this addition and I think we'll move on to the next question, which is probably one for Van. Um, will Samsung integrate DVBI lists loading in the future? Good question. <laughs> yeah, well, I was I was about to say is this a good question? Is not really related to the test suites, and <laughs> uh, for what I am not in a position to answer. Exactly, that's what I thought um, but it's a good question uh, as a question so because it um, not only of course affects Samsung but all the other uh, manufacturers as well um, the question of whether to or how to engage with DVBI and uh, let's leave this as an open question um, but maybe it's a hint um, that is something the um, manufacturers should of course uh, look into if they haven't done so already Last question at the moment. Um, what is the difference between the Samsung test suite and the Ligara test suite? Uh, one for Van again. Yeah, so we are actually talking about HBB TV test suite, which is neither Samsung or Ligada test suite. Um, HBB TV test suites uh, consists of tests from various uh, test, test providers like uh, uh, resilience, uh, OBS, Sofia Digital, and DTT. Uh, the tests are reviewed and approved uh, by HBTV. Uh, Ligada, it's a uh, test harness. I, I was mentioning uh, test harness. Uh, so HBTV tests need the test harness to be uh, executed, and Ligada is one of the available uh, test harness now in the market. So these are proprietary solutions uh, based on manufacturer uh, solutions and um, systems, whereas of course the HPB TV test suite is based on the open HPB TV uh, standard, um, which is uh, free to use and open uh, to all manufacturers, and that is kind of the follow-up then for the test suite as well. Um, behind this, I would almost say philosophy. So there are no more questions, uh, which means that um, you've all done a good job <laughs> with your presentations. Uh, no more questions remain. And I'd uh, like to thank you all for the excellent uh, presentations and insights you've been providing. Of course, you can all be found on LinkedIn and um, on your company uh, websites in case you uh, in the audience have got further questions and would like to collaborate with any of those companies. Um, from my side, a couple of um, reminders for the next events. Um, ben already mentioned the next PlugFest coming on in about four weeks or three weeks time uh, in Milan at Kinetton offices, 24th till the 28th of June, the Kinetton International PlugFest 2024. It's the 15th PlugFest edition. Of course, the PlugFest, if you're not familiar with it, is an event uh, targeting developers from all over the world and working with uh, application development for um, HPB TV platforms. And of course, uh, important factor is interoperability, securing and enabling interoperability to make sure that the applications run on all the systems smoothly on all the devices. And uh, this is a whole week uh, event. Uh, there's also the HPB TV testing event taking place at the same venue and the testing group meeting. Further details on that and registration is available on the HPB TV website in the event section, which is a section where you can also find um, details on further events where HPB TV is involved. And uh, this is of course leading to the big event this year, the annual HPB TV Symposium and Awards, the edition number 12, taking place this year in London at Church House, Central London, Westminster, on the 14th and 15th of November. And uh, it's in collaboration with Everyone TV, the UK platform uh, um, backed by the BBC ITV Channel 4 and Channel 5, the public service broadcasters from the UK. And uh, so please make a note in your diary uh, to be sure uh, that this event is um, in your calendar and further details on that can be found on the HVBT website again in the event section. And uh, to uh, continue with that next week uh, will be the announcement of the call for speakers. So uh, 
or everybody who's involved is of course um, welcome to submit a proposal to hold a speech on day one of the HPB TV symposium. Day two, again, like last year, where we successfully introduced that feature, will be an unconference again, where the delegates uh, can define their own um, agenda with speeches, topics, and so on, coming directly from the participants. And this was really um, uh, receiving positive feedback last year. And so this will be again the second day of the HBB TV Symposium. And of course, not to miss out is uh, the HBB TV Awards celebration taking place in the evening of the first um, day, a glamorous celebration. And the um, submission for the HBB TV Awards will also be opened uh, soon. Last is, as usual, um, we are very happy to receive your suggestions for further topics for HPV TV webinars. There are a couple of ideas already. Uh, for example, one is on addressable TV. So one of the next webinars will probably focus on addressable TV and uh, the involvement of HPV TV, um, current uh, um, use cases, uh, first experiences, and of course the challenges that are still there. Um, updates on the webinars and other relevant topics can be found on the um, HPB TV sites on social media, on X, formerly Twitter, and on LinkedIn. So if you're not there, um, just make sure you subscribe to those updates. Once again, thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, at the end of this session, there's a small survey coming up for you to rate the session to make sure we improve that and uh, make sure it fits your um, needs. Thanks again. and. Uh, Hope to see you again next time at the HPB TV webinar series. Have a good time, take care, and bye-bye. Thank you, bye.